calls have been issued by farmer organizations to march to the national capital on the 13th of February. Nearly 40 farmer unions are demanding the implementation of the Swaminathan Commission's recommendations and the enactment of a law to guarantee a minimum support price for crops, the MSP. The farmers are demanding the provision of uh, pensions for farmers and farm labourers as well. Ahead of the Delhi Chalo protest march, the uh, Punjab Haryana border has been sealed and security barricades have been erected. Even as concrete blocks are being placed at checkpoints, paramilitary forces are also on the ground. Meanwhile, traffic woes plague the people living in the national capital uh, region as highways remain congested. We all remember the 2020 farmer protest that took place and the fact that the three farm laws were eventually repealed. Since then, the government has carried out several other initiatives to empower farmers. The Prime Minister has called farmers as one of the four castes in India and millets are being promoted globally as well. Additionally, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi directly transfers money to poor farmers. Now, Bharat Pratna has also been awarded to icons who have revolutionized India's agricultural sector, including M. Swami Nathan, Chaudhary Charan Singh and P.V. Narsimha Rao. Last but not the least, crop MSPs are at a record high. All this prompts us to ask if the march is just about farmers. Is there any space for genuine conversation on taking MSPs ahead? Or is it going to be a rerun of what happened in 2020? We all remember that dark time. We'll talk about this with our guest. Joining us on the show at this point in time is Mr. Ellen Rao, former DCP Special Cell. Also joining us on the show is Mr. Sanjay Nath Singh, Secretary General of the All India Farmers Association. Last but not the least, Mr. Akash Jindal, Senior Economist, joining us on the program as well. Mr. Jindal, I'll begin with you. Well, 2020-2021 was a terrible year when it came to the farmers' agitation. You know, the agitation lasted for a number of months. Uh, you know, a few farmers, and a lot of farmers rather, lost their lives. There were multiple back and forths that took place between, you know, the farmers' union and, of course, the government. The government did not hesitate to placate them and please them. They took back those laws, you know, and that also led us to believe that, you know, this government was open to a genuine conversation uh, if it was about progress and if it was about growth. But, you know, basically hijacking infrastructure, uh, roadways and railways and putting the lives uh, of people who have nothing to do with this agitation uh, in inconvenience is not the way to go about it. You know, the best thing to do is perhaps book a conference room, have some of your representatives speak to the government directly instead of doing these march ons. What do you say? Uh, good afternoon, Vineet, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Now, Vineet, you have said the last line which you have said is, I think, the best thing any could, anybody could have said. Now, uh, all your viewers already know me as a senior economist, but my other introduction is that I am a Punjab farmer. Not only my immediate family, but I myself do agriculture in Punjab. So I can tell you the other side of the story also. I think you spoke about farm laws. Farm laws were very good laws, very decent laws. And the BJP government is doing everything so well for the economy, for the growth, for the agriculturist also. But I think there are three problems if you talk about Punjab farmers and central government. There are three issues between the Punjab farmers and central government. And the three issues are miscommunication, number two, miscommunication, number three, miscommunication. Now, let me tell you, Vili, when these farm laws were being implemented, we were passed. Now, BJP, which has been doing 99 out of 100 things wonderfully well, they have been uh, taking care of the economy very well. The mistake this uh, gentleman from BJP did was they never reached out and communicated to the farmers in Punjab. What the BJP should have done is what the central government should have done is they should have asked the people to go out in the villages of Punjab, sit with the farmers, speak to them in Punjabi and tell them, answer their questions that this is how the farm laws are going to help you. Because I sitting in Delhi can understand these farm laws could have generated decent cash flows for me and my colleagues. Then going ahead also, agricultural viability, for agricultural viability and agricultural profitability, these farm laws were very good. But the communication which was there with many of my colleagues, many of my neighbors in Punjab was, 
ਸਰਕਾਰ ਸੋਡੀ ਜ਼ਮੀਨ ਖੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਲੈਟ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਟ ਇਟ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਵਾਟ ਇਟ ਮੀਨਸ ਇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਵਿਦ ਥਿਸ ਫਾਰਮ ਲਾਸ ਦ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਵਾਂਟਸ ਟੂ ਸਨੈਚ ਯੋਰ ਲੈਂਡ ਨਾਉ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਵਾਸ ਥੀਸ ਫਾਰਮ ਲਾਸ ਵਰ ਨੇਵਰ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਟਡ ਵੈਲ ਯੈਸ ਬੀਜੇਪੀ ਬੀਜੇਪੀ ਹੈਜ਼ ਵੰਡਰਫੁਲ ਸਪੋਕਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੂ ਟਾਕ ਔਨ ਟੀਵੀ ਬਟ ਆਈ ਵੁਡ ਹੈਵ ਸੁਜੈਸਟਡ ਬੀਜੇਪੀ ਟੂ ਸੈਂਡ ਪੀਪਲ ਟੂ ਵਿਲੇਜਸ ਟੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਟੂ ਥੈਮ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਉ ਆਲਸੋ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਚ ਨੀਡਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਡਨ communication needs to be done now certain things what happened was last time the farm laws were there certain people in delhi i don't want to name anybody they started calling punjab farmers separatists now punjab farmers are not separatists punjab is the land of icons like bhagat singh so they punjab is the land of patriots so i think it's communication gap so what needs to be done is government needs to reach out to people in the villages agriculturists talk to them explain them sell them how the government wants to double their income yes the central government it wants to double their income but has this thing been communicated well i think they are doing things wonderfully well but communication is a problem somewhere so that needs to be communicated apart from that government has been doing many good things mm. now as far as msp also uh, government has done good things agriculture as far as fasal bima is concerned government has progressed well the infrastructure which, uh, which is being built is definitely going to help our agriculturalist brothers now they should be also motivated to generate more and more cash crops because that's going to have much more financial viability for them because they also need to be communicated that the way agriculture was being done in 60s and 70s now it has to be done in a different manner because every occupation has changed since in the past 50 60 years things have changed so i think that communication gap needs to be plugged in of course infrastructure shouldn't be blocked because economy is progress everybody wants we all remember how delhi was blocked and how people had problems mm. going delhi right. going and coming in yeah right absolutely so you're quite right mr sanjeenath singh also joins us at this point in time he's the secretary general of the all india farmers association uh, mr sanjeenath singh i hope you can hear me sir yeah i can hear you you're sir, very odd sir b- it feels like deja vu doesn't it we've been down this road before we have discussed these issues before let me in fact uh, very quickly and uh, very uh, you know in 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 a very swift manner take you through some of uh, the yojanas and uh, you know the progress that has been made under the bjp regime in the last 10 years some of uh, you know the laws and uh, the efforts that were made by this government include the pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana the soil health card scheme the pradhan mantri koshal vikas yojana uh, the ena which is of course a national agricultural market the pradhan mantri atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan yojana the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana is one of them the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana is another one the pm krishi sampada yojana is the other one which the prime minister also spoke about just a few days ago in his address in the lok sabha as well mr jindal is of the opinion he joined a little before you did that you know there is nothing ill will at the behest of the government all this is mr sanjeenath singh is a case of miscommunication is it a case of miscommunication there have been ample meetings sir in the past as well between the farmers union and the government uh, you know but nothing transpired out of it because all they wanted was absolution but how about finding a middle path where do you stand on this sir well as far as uh, my stance goes it is uh, based on uh, certain facts and these facts are that uh, uh, as my uh, earlier uh, speaker uh, he, uh, he 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 said that miscommunication has been a major cause of all the um, uh, issues related with the new farm laws which i was very upset when they were withdrawn i thought that was a good hope for the indian agriculture in the times to come however uh, now that these have been withdrawn what we are left with is uh, probably the only assurance is that of msp now msp is something which is actually i have always been saying is a, actually an executive order it cannot be a law but yes now that they want uh, the msp to be uh, to have some kind of a legislative uh, backing to it then some middle path has to be taken out that okay fine we will guarantee that for the next so many years the msp will be uh, guaranteed but uh the executive part of it that is fixing of the msp naturally has to be much more dynamic 
depending on the markets and the produce and uh, uh, the surpluses and uh, various other factors which come to play in the market so uh, to uh, fix the price so that is something which uh, the government will have to look into otherwise we are looking into some kind of a situation where uh, um, uh, again an agitation will build up just before the elections and some uh, political uh, uh, forces will try to hijack that farmers uh, agitation which i feel was done earlier and then th there will be a lot of hue and cry and uh, uh, there will be problems which the industry will face will uh, lose a lot of revenue in uh, in other businesses as well so i feel that something has to be done right away and uh, stopping the farmers from coming to delhi uh, i think is uh, not a very good idea they should be allowed to come in and uh, give them some uh, within certain controls of course and they they come and they should not run a mock but they should come uh, put up their representations let let the agriculture minister or whoever they want to meet let them meet uh, that uh, political authority and bring a solution to it now uh, come to come to think of it uh, this agitation which took place so many uh, uh, almost about uh, it ended about 2 uh, years ago if i'm not wrong mm -hmm. then a committee a committee was formed a committee was formed to uh, uh, to look into the msp what has what has happened in in that many uh, uh, in that period nothing has happened nothing concrete has come up mm. so so the signals which go out to the farmers is something that government kuch nahi kar rahi they are not doing anything at the same time this also gives uh, this is fodder for the uh, people who want to agitate mm. that that form a agitation so that's exactly what's happening right now mm. but the msp is uh, this still is still uh, something that the farmers are But, obviously agitating for uh you know the revocation of the three farm bills has already taken place but you know this methodology of uh, gherao and dharna and rasta yes. roko is 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 in no way going to help them achieve what they want and this is lok sabha year you know the opposition also is not making it easy they are putting more fuel on this fire they will they will they, 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 this is a golden opportunity but for them but at the same time let me okay. tell you it is also a laxity on the part of the uh, government to acknowledge the fact that okay this is a demand of the farmers it is it is and for the last so many uh, more than a year i have been attending many of these uh, farmers uh, me uh, meetings and all that where msp was gradually being spread around that okay no msp no vote that that kind of that kind of uh, appeal was going on so this is something which is which is something uh, the government must act on it whatever the committee is doing they should do something about it and uh, uh, bring an end to this frankly speaking if the new laws had come msp regime would have come to an end logically that's what i think hmm. because Miss, <laughs> right mr mr elen rao former dcp special cell also joins us on the program mr rao i hope you can hear me sir Yes I can hear you with it. So for the administration and law enforcement this was a nightmare from August 2020 to uh, December 2021 and something like this happening again what were the lessons that were learned according to you the last time around that would save at least the civilians and the people from you know getting caught up between these fireworks uh you know between the farmers and the government Yes we need this is really a nightmare for the police forces and the administration and uh, definitely that's another uh, issue is that the public uh, at large will again face uh, the situation same situation which they were facing for the last 2 years and one year uh, when their agitation was on now uh, i agree with mr nath that uh, 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 because of this agitation there is huge loss of the revenue to the government as well as to other uh, private uh, entrepreneurs and uh, uh, this is definitely a, a very um, a great uh, 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 you can say a uh, great challenge for the security forces to control this situation and i i also agree that the stopping the farmers coming into delhi that will not serve any purpose because that will uh, go uh, definitely that will uh, uh, the, the farmers will have a more sympathy for that and i think that if they are coming to delhi they must 
be allowed to talk to the uh, the um, uh, officials, government officials, or the ministers or the government, and so that that, that this should be resolved. I think that's the coming uh, scene of the, the uh, Lok Sabha elections. And if this situation is there, definitely the government will def uh, may may have some adverse uh, views about the public from, from the public as well as uh, from the farmers. So it it should not be considered as a political issue, and because. The police forces are also um, uh, will be having a great problem to control all these things. You might might have seen on the, uh, during the last agitation, all the borders were sealed, and uh, the public had a very tough time. Um, um, everything was uh, hue and cry, and there was a great loss to the revenue as well as um, uh, so many other problems arose. Uh, so many um, farmers. Uh, uh, died and injured. so many people were injured. So considering all these things, uh, the government should take uh, a considered view and then uh, that solution should be uh, reached at the, as early as possible uh, in this regard. Hmm. Vineet. Mr. Jindal, what are the economic costs of these, uh, of these protests? You know, the government obviously uh, did not raise a finger or did not raise any kind of uh, aggression on these farmers for almost a year and a half from 2020 to 2021 and that is also not the way we do business you know but 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 there is an angle that the government will have to employ they will have to like they say in colloquial proverbial english they will have to crack the whip because this is going to become a precedent for you know whoever wants to in fact deal with the government and not deal with what the government has to do for you i'll i'll, I'll tell you a solution uh, what the point which you have emphasized is very important these days, GDP important is uh, GDP growth is very important for us because it actually means higher per capita income for each one of us, and particularly for our laborer friend. Because in case borders are blocked, our laborer, daily wages laborer who has to earn 800 rupees a day, he loses his job. So that's very important what you have said. But I'll I'll tell you there's a solution, brother. The solution is rather than having all the agriculturists come to Delhi. Why doesn't our central government, which is a wonderful government, which has been doing 99 out of 100 things excellently well, why don't they reach out? They be stopped at the Punjab border and our honorable ministers go there itself, whether it's Ambala border, Rajpura border or Bathinda border and talk to the farmers there itself. So I think a dialogue should happen there and then itself. So we can have a solution without use of any quotes, where they, rather than having them come all the way to Delhi, they be stopped there. Their representatives, senior representatives from central government who can take decisions, they should reach there and talk to them, have dialogue and have solutions. I am of a firm opinion that definitely solutions can emerge. The only thing is our agricultural brother need to be told to certain ideas. They need to be explained to them that this is how this is going to benefit them. And certain issues they are raising must be heard. Also, I would like to tell those people, certain people in Delhi have the habit, I'll repeat that, saying agriculturists are separatists. No, none of the Punjab agriculturists is a separatist. We are from the land of the greatest patriots of this country called Bhagat Singh. So all of them, all of us are patriots. So I think reaching out, rather than having the agriculturists come here, central government should sit there. Solution can be emerged, so the borders also wouldn't be blocked. Our agriculture would also be happy and our economy would keep on prospering. We all know we are the fastest growing economy today. Our economy is the best economy. We are the fifth biggest economy. And because of the central government efforts, we'll become the third biggest economy. And our agricultural brother need to be told that if the economy progresses, they are the ones who are going to benefit. Because if uh, agitation takes place, they block Delhi. Now then what happens is an agriculturist or an agriculturist son like Akash Indal, his profession would suffer. Mm. So, to be communicated them. Hum bhi, hum bhi kisan hai. Hum, hum, kisan kisan ka beta hu. So no, no, nobody wants that there should be degrowth of the economy. Everybody wants the economy to be grown. The only thing is communication gap needs to be removed. That and if we do effort, which this government can do, because this is a positive government, right. government so, so I think this can very well be done. So they should be stopped there. In, a, in, a, in an amicable manner, they should be stopped there without right. use of force. Dialogue should happen there at Chandigarh border, Rajpura border, Sarsa border, and things can be sorted out. That's what my suggestion is. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sanjanath Singh, you know, your grandfather was the former prime minister.
Sorry, I uh, lost your voice. Mr. Mr. Lal Bahadur Shastri, he coined the slogan uh, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. It became Jai Vigyan, and now it is Jai Anusandhan. If if he was alive today, if he, if you think from his mentality, what would be the solutions that could come forth? Uh, let us not forget that this government has also honoured uh, and 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 basically recognised the efforts which have been made by former prime ministers and leaders who did a lot for farmers, including Mr. M. S. Swaminathan. What do you think these people would have told these farmers if they could? Well, uh, I think if uh, uh, Lalu Shastri was alive. Uh, situation like, like like this would not have come up because he was one great communicator and he could hmm. communicate at the grassroots level very well. So that is one. Uh, the other thing is that uh, probably he would have also looked into it and said that okay, fine, we need to go forward and we need a uh, much more open economy and uh, we don't require a regimented. Uh... <coughs> Sorry. No problem, sir. Sorry. No problem, sir. Go on. Uh, regimented pricing and all that, because MSP was only a market intervention to ensure that the farmers get their fair price uh, and they don't have to bother about uh, marketing, but only uh, on production, because that was the need of the hour. Mm. That there was food shortage, but today, I think we have food surplus. We are definitely food surplus, <coughs> and when we <coughs> sorry need to open up our economy. Now, uh, various uh, uh, factors. The other prime ministers have also been uh, honoured. That's perfectly all right. Uh, Doctor M S Swaminathan had done a great job, but you know something which I find very uh, difficult to digest is the fact. That uh, I'm sorry, I'm digressing a little. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Korean, who was a great uh, uh, person, uh, he became father of white revolution, and M. S. Swaminathan has become father of green revolution. The man who started the green revolution and whose idea was uh, uh, white revolution through National Dairy Development Board has been totally not been given that honor. And that man was Lal Bahadur Shastri. He is the one who brought in all this. He is the man who went to Anand and spent four nights as the prime minister. And one night in the village, I happened to be travelling with him as a small child to Anand. And uh, I remember that trip little bit, but I don't know the details at that that age. And definitely, I, I was not aware. But later on, I've come, I've learnt about it. And he, uh, while uh, staying at uh, Dr. Korean's house, because there were no government accommodation there, he uh, uh, and one night he spent in the village incognito, not as prime minister, and stayed with the villager. He decided on a national dairy development board, for which Dr. Korean was made in charge. So, so. Certainly, uh, earlier the Congress regime and now even this regime try, has got mixed up. But they, everybody has to play their political games as well. They are after all in politics, so they do that. But the fact is that, uh, coming back to the, my point, that uh, I feel that uh, we would have gone ahead uh, uh, on a different track and uh, Shastri would have taken a different uh, uh, route that is modernizing agriculture, uh, opening up the markets and uh, uh, give, providing and, and communicating. The most important thing is that they must be communicated. Yes. The farmers need to be communicated, not yes. to be thrust upon. Like the new farm laws, all the three farm laws were thrust upon the farmers and that is an advantage uh, which everybody in the opposition took and also it kind of gave a wrong message to the farmer leaders. That we didn't ask us and suddenly it's been for ordinance. What is this? So the people, people uh, were agitated against this, mm. the, the methodology of bringing it. Mm. So that's something which needs to be tackled and it should not be repeated again. They must be communicated. Right. They have to be told and this, this 
uh, issue has to be resolved. Look, going back to APMC system is throwing back the farmers in the clutches of certain uh, uh, mandi mafia. That is all, mm. I would say. Absolutely. We have to break that and get out of it. Mr. Rao, how should uh, you know Delhi and CR prepare for this onslaught once again? And how do you think the government, along with the help and support of the law enforcement agencies, perhaps you know reduce the inconvenience for the citizens to a minimum as possible? Yes, Vineet, it can be done in two phases. Number one, that uh, the law enforcement agencies and the government has the, their uh, their own mechanism. That is, one is intelligence wing and they will be collecting intelligence about the uh, agitators uh, activities and demands and whatever is these and another is the um, uh, taking law and order uh, situation this uh, uh, haryana government and ncr even uh, haryana government and punjab government should coordinate and with ncr the delhi ncr also and so that there should be a minimum inconvenience to the general public and if they uh, really insist to come in delhi that should be allowed and if it can be sorted out with the uh, dialogues, and I I fully agree with the uh, two uh, spokespersons that uh, this communication system should be uh, should not be closed. Always this every every uh, this is not a big problem, but definitely it's a problem. But even the biggest problem can be solved with the communication, with the uh, dialogues, and all these right. things. And that so so what out. necessarily has come out of our conversation with uh, with with our experts is that the communication between the government of India and these farmers needs to find uh, you know, a better quality uh, instead of uh, you know, just communicating on social media as was done the last time around. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.